So uh, welcome everybody. I don't, if you combine Ansible and Docker, you can do it in, in, in a couple of ways. I was looking at the most simple way to do uh, for the talk, and that is create a Docker image using Ansible. So that is what I tried. So we're talking about because Ansible has uh, a couple of um, use cases for application construction, like you can do it on a local Vagrant machine on your laptop or on in local mode. You can use Ansible with Packer to create images. You can use uh, Ansible uh, for cloud and bare metal uh, provisioning and for deployments. So uh, it's really useful and I think it already um, has proven that it is useful in this way. Um, and if you want to do something with Docker, then application construction, you can do it with Docker file, and that is the native native way. I mean, how many of you use Docker on a daily basis? Okay, that is, no. <laughs> that's all. Um, you can use a Docker file to describe uh, what Docker should do to create an image that you can use to launch a container. And in this file you create instructions and each instruction creates a layer in this file system of Docker and basically it's a lot of bash commands concatenated together. And if you have more complex applications, if you want to pack more than microservices, then um, I question the maintainability and the testability and the portability of a Docker file. So I posted this online, but I will show the slides. I have also, I can do a demo later on. I made a little example of a Docker file an Ansible directory with a playbook in it and a little directory that's just a WAR file. What the playbook mm -hmm. does is create a Tomcat environment with Java with this WAR file in a Docker container. Um, so it's very simple, but it's just an example of more complex work that you can do. So with Ansible. So this Docker file here has a, a standard header, like what the base image is and that I am maintaining it. And um, yeah, we introduce a label uh, so that we can so that everybody who sees this image knows how to run it later on. Um, we add a directory with Ansible, and then we have one run statement, and in this run statement it installs Ansible with you from the EPAL directory and then basically runs Ansible Galaxy to get roles from Galaxy and then those roles are applied with this playbook. Um, when this is done, the housekeeping continues because at that point uh, we can add the um, application, that Tomcat uh, application, and that application depends on certain environment variables, like the Catalina home, and it exposes port 8080 uh, when, you, when you run this. So that's a very simple example. <coughs> As all hackers, we also appreciate using a make file. Uh, in the make file, we have the standard command so, so, do you, so that you can do a make build or a make run or a make help um, and test, make test. So that is uh, yeah, just for convenience. I mean, we don't want to type all these. And it helps document this. The playbook is very simple. It, it has some variables defined and it applies two standard roles from the Galaxy that we included 
with the Ansible Galaxy command. And this is sort of a slow motion of the Docker build, the first part. Um, if I build this, it will run through the header at Ansible directory and then in step 4 starts to run all this. And every time it creates an intermediate container and then drops the other one. And after a while, um, after 10 steps, it finishes. And then I introduced one slide. Like, isn't Ansible a lot of overhead in a Docker image? And that is 27 megabytes. So I don't think that is a problem, but uh, I think it's, it helps with this abstraction layer that you can <coughs> create more complex containers without creating hairy Docker files. Um, and also what's important that um, if you work and approach your uh, application construction like this, that you can postpone the decision how to run the application until later, because the Ansible playbooks are reusable and all the instructions in a Docker file are not reusable if you decide to move, for instance, to bare metal. Um, then there's a lot of reusable content with uh, Ansible roles on Galaxy and probably in your own libraries. And I think that the well-structured Ansible playbooks allow uh, better maintainability, uh, better testability. Uh, also with the Ansible room, you have fewer layers in your uh, Docker images. And yeah, the cost is only a little extra space. That's it. I have a live demo. It's already running. I guess you need to stop it first. Is correct. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So um, that's it. Uh, <laughs> any questions? That was it. Then uh, more big. Question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, some critical Docker is that the, the, the images are not being maintained properly, and it's something you hear uh, a lot. Is Ansible going to help in that uh, perspective? No. no? <laughs> they, dropped, uh, they dropped out of that. Another question. <coughs> well, why don't you eliminate the overhead of the extra space by removing Ansible again after the playbook has finished? Yeah. That's an uh, because then you could kind of point. That this is yeah, that's true. You could.
you can do an actual check on the, on the outer space you win by losing the, uh, the layers and then using Antel instead. So if you do a disk, no. because each layer obviously adds more space to the, to the image. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I don't. Yeah, but uh, with all these storage drivers, I'm not uh, yeah. fully uh, up to date yet uh, on how much uh, of an impact that has, and, uh, and if, <coughs> if it is really purged as well. If you if you try to delete it afterwards, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. The benefit of keeping Ansible inside the document generator, you can always connect from outside and accept it all again if you need to. Sure, I understand that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what's just interesting for, for building the actual image, but then afterwards, if you did a new container, you just spin up a new container. Right? So why would you need Ansible in the container? Well, it's just a different, different process. Yeah, but yeah, you could remove it again. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. OK, thank you all. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you have uh, any problems running uh, existing roles in Docker, uh, uh, bare metal role, let's say. Uh, for instance, uh, run directly to that XCS and... Uh, uh, yes, there are, it is not the a full, uh, it's not a full operating system. So, uh, some things are uh, taken care of by the host, especially in uh, networking uh, realm. Yeah. So, uh, setting your uh, resolve.com, for instance, or so, yeah. just makes much sense. Yeah, our experience is that a lot of roles do not work in Docker when they do work on a, a normal hardware. Yeah. You mean external roles or roles that you yeah. created? Uh, external roles that we use on normal bootstrap uh, Debian or Ubuntu uh, images, and when you run them inside Docker, they just uh, uh, get all sorts of errors because of missing directory, missing binaries, missing. Uh, a few things like service, if you use the backup class of services then those things might not work within Docker <coughs> because it doesn't have other functionality that's there at the host. Yeah. Yeah. What I know is that the Docker images that typically are out there on docker.io, mm -hmm. they are optimized for the minimum size and we do not yeah. have contains like yeah. if config and stuff like yeah. that. So if you underline things they're using like the utilities, <coughs> they blindly assume that they're there, but they're not there. Yeah. On, on the other hand, you can just Right after the update, you can just install them and bring the image up to the speed with what uh, requirement you have. Yeah, but the roles should manage their dependencies. Yes, but yes, not all roles do that. We don't want to uh, do a lot of extra tasks inside of roles uh, just for Docker. We want to create just one role, for instance, uh, installing Apache, uh, and we don't want five extra steps uh, specific to Docker. You make a separate Docker role to when yeah, you can, but it would be nice if you have some new roles. Uh, yeah. We can do, but just make sure that you include the Docker role. Yeah, I don't think that Galaxy denotes whether it is suitable for Docker or so for a role. It's not in the metadata. Okay, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.